Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So, well, I'm not a video, I'm like, I'm here in front of you to speak about a very serious talk. And maybe some of you guys could be very, uh, you know, like, very, um, you know, surprised about talking about strategy right now. And I'm going to try to to make it very easy, in fact, because I think the strategy is a, is a very important thing. But there is one thing which is more important thing than, than the strategy itself, is to understand the DNA, the true DNA of your company, to understand what is the vision, or in other words, to explain in a few seconds what makes your brand so different. All right, so you can think about your brand, think about your company, think about your service, your product, any project that you have online, offline, and try now to see what I'm going to show you, because I'm going to try to, to convince you uh, about the importance of owning a true, particular, unique vision. Why that? Well, yes, because there are thousands of brands out there, thousands of people trying to do the same, trying to speak up, to, mo to do more noise than you. And it's a jungle. So what can you make to you know, fight against those guys? Well, in fact, there is one word you can just forget about it. It's the word fighting. And I, have, you know, I learned another word, which is you know, make competition irrelevant. Make a project, create something that becomes so unique that you're not trying to fight against the other guys, but you're just trying to be alone in your place. When we did uh, HYT with my team about four, four or five years ago, we created a company based on mechanical watch, you know, like a true watch, working with the best watchmaker, just to name one, Audemars Piguet, as a content. And we decided to bring something completely crazy, which is liquid. Guess what? Liquid is the enemy of, of mechanical movement for 500 years. So just by creating a movement with liquid indication system, creates such a surprise that everybody will be like amazed, not to say something else, about some, you know, like a new product, a new innovation in, 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 in this very traditional world. So we created something you need and we made competition irrelevant. We created something that nobody can bring. HYT brought liquid and mechanical movements all together in the watch, uh, in the watch case. So, in fact, just by explaining HYT right now with this idea of creating a paradox between liquids and mechanic, I'm just what I'm doing, I'm trying to disintellectualizing everything. In fact, great and powerful ideas are very simple. They are very simple and you should be able to, in fact, give the message to somebody else. I always say the same th story, I always say that with HYT, the great thing is that they will remember me when I speak about HYT because they will remember my face, the fact I'm bold, and I have like uh, transparent glasses. And I, you know, I, 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 with my team, we created a watch which is combining liquids and mechanics. And even my grandfather, my grandmother, she could explain it. She could give the message to somebody else. She would not say, oh, he created a watch. She would, she would say, he created a watch based on liquid systems because she will use the word. Everybody can understand and will remember this. So powerful ideas are ideas that you can explain in a few seconds. So think about your company, think about your project, and try to explain it in five seconds. You should be able to do so if your, if your idea is powerful, if your company is powerful, okay? So, today, I'm a little bit like a magician because I know exactly what you have in your brain. That's going to be easy, and I'm going to use the same type of examples that you have seen today. When you see this sign here and this word, I exactly know what you have in mind. You're not having the strategy of Tesla. You don't know it. What you have in mind is, you know, like strong images, and I know them. You all think about electricity. You all think about, you know, the dashboard. You know, they just reinvented this very boring dashboard that we all have in a car by having this, like, iPad thing where everybody understands that, everybody recognizes it, and everybody, everybody remembers it. And you all think about this gentleman. We just talked about him, about him just before. They are simple ideas. I call them the marketing shortcuts. You think about one name, one brand, or one person, one city, and you have automatically images in front of you. So when you create something, you better understand what you want people to see as an image or as words. Think about Geneva. Well, again, 
I exactly know what you have in mind. Guess what? You have this for sure. You have this for sure. And most probably you also have this. So think about you know, Paris. Think about the cities. It's also a brand. A city is a brand. A person sometimes also behaves as a brand. You, you know, give messages, and a city is exactly the same thing. So in fact, what I'm saying here is, you know, always simple idea remains. Always simple idea. You know, you can, you can have great strategies, but at the end of the day, it's the strategy, the, the, the great idea, the strong idea that remains in your brain. I'm going to take a, an example of uh, Starbucks. And I will try to, because this is a great example, this is the one I, I really love it. <clears throat> we are in 1993, okay? At that time, Starbucks is really, really a place where you, know, you don't want to spend time, okay? So some of you guys here are very young, so you didn't, you didn't live it this time, but I was living in New York in 1993. And in 1993, I can tell you that Starbucks was a great network of coffee, uh, like restaurants, but it was like, like more like a McDonald's than, than, than just like a lounge or a restaurant. Starbucks at that time was this. It was like a cup with very bad coffee, black coffee that gives headache, and that the assistant would take and bring it up in the, in the first floor, second floor, to share the, the coffee in the morning. And uh, the problem with, with Starbucks is that they were like great, you know, like a, a great traffic of people buying coffee in the morning, but then it was completely empty during the day. Okay? And even worse than that, Starbucks was this. So it was really, really bad. You didn't want to spend like a minute. So you go, you take the coffee, and then you have a headache. <laughs> that was the problem. So what happened in 1993, there is one guy who is the owner, still the, uh, still the CEO of the company, Mr. Schultz. And he brought all those uh, great, talented people, great minds. And he asked the question, he said, guys, what can we do to improve the traffic? What, to improve the business? How can we make the traffic more intense from 9 a.m. up to noon and in the afternoon because it's too empty? What can we do? And of course, you can imagine that the company is a big company already at that time. It's already 300 points of sales in the US. It's massive. It's massive, but it's all about quantity. It's not really about quality, which is typical American, to be honest with you. And he asked the guys you know, around the table, great marketing people, Gates, product management uh, people. And he says, you know, what can we do? Guys, bring me some ideas. Give me some food. And of course, we hear, well, let's create a new ad campaign. Well, for sure, there is a great marketing person who has got great ideas and, and will reinvent a new message. There is one guy who says, well, the logo sucks. You know, let's do something better and let's improve the logo. And there is the other guy who says, well, the packaging is maybe not so right, so let's move and change the packaging. And of course, you continue like this and up to the point where the guy says, well, the coffee is not really, it's not really good. We should maybe change the coffee. Okay, and there is one guy who is my former partner in Paris, who is the consultant? He's the guy, he's the French guy uh, in, uh, in the room. <clears throat> and he says in front of everybody in 1993, he said, guys, I think that you've got a problem because you don't really understand your DNA. And everybody starts to laugh. It's like, come on. The DNA of Starbucks coffee, we are number one coffee maker in the US. Come on, 300 points of sales. We are coffee. And they say, no, no, you're not coffee because it can't be, it can't be you. A DNA is something else, it's something that makes you apart, something that brings your you know, body unique. You know? So I think that your DNA is in fact the source, the beginning of coffee. Go back to Italy. And coffee is all about sharing a moment with friends. And then nobody understands what he says. In fact, Bruno, my former partner, gave one sentence that will change the future of Starbucks for the next 20 years. He says, Starbucks is a place. It's where the people meet. And instead of investing into products, into packaging, into new ad campaign, into new logo, into whatever you want, he just said one sentence that will change completely the vision, the strategy of the, of the company. Suddenly, it becomes this. Suddenly, it's a place. Suddenly, it's a lounge. 
It's, it's a place where people meet. And this becomes the place where all the young guys, and I was again living in New York in 1995, where we all meet. This is the beginning of Wi-Fi. This is the, where you get the music, where you get you know, uh, a, a great atmosphere, and you want to spend time. And guess what? Starbucks changes completely at that time, not only because of this, but because the atmosphere and the whole company is transformed by one stupid sentence, which is you know, this big idea that changes everything. So really change everything. So I'm a guy from the watch industry. So wh what about the watch industry? Well, that's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to give you a few, few examples of strong, successful brands. By the way, success doesn't mean you know, quantity. doesn't mean that the brand is highly performing in terms of finance. But success for me is like a, it's standing out. It's different. It's respected. There is a great image behind that. So the one idea only concept or principle works also for the watch industry and for many other industries, in fact. Richard Mill. For those who are living in Switzerland, they may know Richard Mille, a niche company, a niche brand, yes. However, it became pretty strong today. They claim for the last 16 years that having a Richard Mille on your wrist is like to have an F1, a Formula One on your wrist. So they created a watch, a movement, everything detailed, that when you have this watch on your wrist, you have this impression that you have a Formula One on your wrist. He kept this idea for the last 16 years. Hublot is the same, Art of Fusion. We all know the brand. But when I say Breitling, I'm sure that most probably what you have in mind, you have yellow, you have the pilot watch, it's aviation. For the last 20 or 30 years, the idea of, of Breitling is simple, understandable, and you can give it to the next one. You can explain to your grandmother, yes, Breitling is all about you know, the pilot watch. You will say it because it's a simple idea. Omega. Well, depending if they launch the new James Bond movie, that will be James Bond watch. And HYT, as I said, three seconds. It's liquid and it's mechanic. So you can continue like this. And I just took one last example of this very powerful idea. And this is a brand I didn't work with, it's Patek. <clears throat> but I was there when they started the new company, the new campaign, sorry, in 1995 called The Patrimony. You never own a Patek Philippe but you give it for the next generation. This idea was so powerful. But it's not just an ad campaign. It's much more, much more than that. It's an idea that goes 360 for the company. Look, you have the watch, you have the ad campaign here, and you have this auction guy who says, yes, give valuation to your, to your watch. In fact, by telling the people that when you own a Patek, you never own it very much, but what you do is you have a watch that will you know, you know, gain value, create value, and you will give it to the next generation. What they have done in 1995, they started to purchase back all watches during their auction sales to prove the market that, in fact, owning a Patek Philippe gives you know, va give valuation to your watch. So it was not just an ad campaign. It was an ad campaign but followed by a lot of different things, including commercial moves, such as buying back all watches at the auction houses. So in fact, strong brands succeed only because they have the three words, distinctive, credible, and relevant promises. So be different, make competition irrelevant. You know, don't do like the other guys, be unique. That's the question that you should ask. You know, are you? You know, can you explain or describe your company in just five seconds and be unique and powerful? Thank you very much.